The Russian Sleep Experiment is the terrifying tale in which five people are kept awake for 15 days and the horrifying effect it had on their minds and bodies. Now, this is just a story and there is no evidence to prove this actually happened, but with that in mind, people say with the things that were going on in this time period, there is a possibility something like this could have been conducted. Because we cannot forget that in the same era as this story is based, Russian scientists released a video of severed dog heads that were kept alive for several hours using an artificial blood circulation system. So, although this is fictional, there is a possibility it's based on historical experiments. So let's get into the story. In the 1940s, scientists in Russia decided to conduct experiments to test the effects of extreme sleep deprivation. They selected five World War II political prisoners deemed as enemies of the state and promised them freedom if they could stay awake for 30 days. They were then sealed into a small chamber and exposed to an experimental gas stimulant to keep them awake. The prisoners were monitored through portholes and microphones and they were provided with enough food to last for a month, along with some books, running water, a toilet and beds. For the first five days, very little happened, apart from the discussions between the prisoners were getting more emotional and they started to reveal their inner thoughts to each other. On day six, their behavior took a turn for the worst. They were getting paranoid, stopped communicating and started blaming each other for being trapped in the room. They started sitting with their backs to each other and strange inaudible whispers could be heard through the microphones. After nine days, one of the men started screaming. He ran up and down the small chamber in crazed terror, screaming and crying so much that he lost his voice and reduced it to a whimpering croak. It was later discovered that he had completely torn his vocal cords. The four other captives seemed oblivious to the screaming man, but two of them were observed quietly tearing pages from books, defecating on them and sticking them to the glass portholes in the chamber. By day 14, the scientists could no longer look in and observe the subjects. On day 15, the screaming had stopped and the room was silent. It was only the oxygen monitors that indicated any sign of life and no longer able to see in the chamber, the scientists were concerned the men had fallen unconscious. At midnight on the 15th day, they decided to open the chamber to check, but before opening it, they sent this message to the men. We are opening the chamber to test the microphones. Step away from the door and lie flat on the floor or you will be shot. Compliance will earn one of you freedom. The cell remained silent until one quivering voice said, we no longer want to be free. The scientists entered the cell and were greeted by a vision of unimaginable horror. The food provided was not eaten, but the men had blood dripping from their mouths. Each of them had chunks of flesh and sinew ripped from their bodies, and there were indications from the destruction of flesh and exposed bones on their fingertips that these horrific wounds had been self-inflicted, not by teeth, but by the subject's bare hands. They had been eating themselves. Some of them had so much flesh stripped from their bodies that their rib cage could clearly be seen, and their internal organs that were still attached and working had been removed from the body cavity. The subjects were still unsilent, but when the scientists turned off the gas, it sent them into a frenzy. They attacked the scientists and guards with such strength that one of the security guards who tried to stop the attacks died after having his testicles ripped out with the bare hands of one of the subjects. Along with this, five guards were also killed. All efforts to sedate the five men were resisted. It was as if their bodies were rejecting any drugs that tried to pacify them. Even after receiving a dose that would normally have put down three men, it failed to calm the subjects. In the frenzied violence that followed, two of the subjects succumbed to their horrific self-inflicted wounds. Finally, the three remaining men were restrained and tied up. All three of them were begging to be kept awake, refusing anaesthetic, and choosing to have their surgical procedures to have their removed organs placed back in their bodies whilst wide awake and without painkillers. The first subject to be operated on died due to blood loss and it was discovered that nine bones in his body had been broken. The second man who had started screaming on day six, of course unable to speak, communicated by smiling as surgery was performed in a seemingly sick, satisfying way. When the surgery ended, he became angry and demanded by writing on paper that the surgeon should keep cutting. The third subject simply muttered over and over, I must remain awake. Although distressed at the monsters they had created, the scientists were still intrigued by their subjects' behavior and decided to return the two surviving men to the chamber, exposing them once again to the gas. Only one made it back to the chamber though, the other fell asleep and passed away. The final surviving subject grew impatient, 
demanding he be returned to the chamber immediately. He broke free from his restraints and grabbed one of the guarding soldiers' guns, shooting two of the scientists in the head. He was overpowered and before more damage could be done, one of the scientists grabbed the gun and pointed it at the subject. He shouted at him, what are you, I must know. The subject replied, have you forgotten so easily, we are you, we are the madness that lurks within you all, begging to be free at every moment in your deepest animal mind. We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence and paralysis when you go to the nocturnal haven we cannot tread. The scientist staggered backwards before shooting the subject. As he lay dying on the floor, he spluttered his last words, so nearly free. So, that is the Russian sleep experiment. Like I said, this is just a fictional story, but it's possible that it could have been influenced by historical events. There is no denying that if a country could find a way of keeping soldiers awake for long periods of time, this would greatly increase their fighting abilities. And things like the Stanford Prison Experiment, the Nazi Experiments, and the CIA's MK Ultra Mind Control prove psychological experiments on humans similar to this have happened. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and next week's special will be the story behind the Amateurville Horror. Thanks for watching, and don't forget the importance of a good night's sleep.